Hey everybody, Chandler Bolt here, and joining me today is Russell Brunson. So let me tell you a little bit about Russell. Russell started his first online company while he was wrestling at Boise State University. Uh, within a year of graduating, he sold over a million dollars worth of his own products and services from his basement. Uh, for over 12 years now, Russell has been starting and scaling companies online, and he owns a software company called ClickFunnels. Uh, he owns a supplement company, a coaching company, and one is, the, is, is one of the top super affiliates in the world. Uh, Dot Com Secrets, his company, and also the title of his book was created to help entrepreneurs around the world start, promote, and grow their companies online. And Russell lives in Boise, Idaho with his wife, Colette, and their five children. Russell, welcome, man. Thanks, man. We're excited to be here. <laughs> excited to have you. So first off, I want to start, you know, you had this recent book launch, which we're going to talk all about uh, in this interview, and especially the back end, monetizing, all that good stuff. Uh, but for starters, I mean, you sold a million worth of products. So you had a lot of things going for you. ClickFunnels, uh, you know, a lot going on. Why a book? Oh, man. Um, <laughs> that's a good question. Um, it was one of those things where when I first got started, uh, I heard somebody, I can't remember who, someone, probably someone in your series talking about like, you need a book, you need a book. And I was like sold on the idea I needed a book. So I tried to start writing a book and probably 10 years ago and I tried and I tried. It's it's hard. Like it was really hard for me. And um, I kept starting one and not finishing, starting one, not finishing it. And then um, about two years ago, one of my buddies, we were, um, he's a chiropractor and we we're out to eat somewhere. We're hanging out. And he was like, dude, how come everybody who's awesome has a book except for you? And I'm like, you're right. Like I really needed, I just, I just need to do it. Like I'm just, it has to happen now. And, um, and I'm grateful that it took me that long though. Cause I feel like that, like the book, like you almost, you have to earn a book. Like it's not something that you just, I'm going to go write a book. Like you have to earn it from like your experience from doing stuff. And, and I look back, I don't think I was, I was ready for it back then. I hadn't, I don't think I had the scars and the battle wounds you need to really, you know, have a good book. And so I started putting it together and, uh, it was a, it was a hard process. Like to be hundred percent honest, it wasn't the easiest thing, but but I wanted to write a good book too. Some people don't write good books and I wanted to write a really good book and um, something that that gave everything that I do and what I believe and what we show people in, in a easy to understand format. And so, and uh, and I knew that we had some cool things coming up like ClickFunnels and like some other things. And I thought that it would be a really good um, uh, introduction into the bigger, the other things we have, right? Like like to explain someone like, why do you need a funnel? How do you do funnel? Like that, that's like a hard concept to do. And so like, how do you get, that information in someone's hands so they're excited by it and i thought a book is like the right mechanism to to get somebody inspired and excited about the concept and so that's kind of why we decided to finally do it and it's it's been kind of a roller coaster ride since but definitely uh worth it for sure i'm curious what were some of the uh, ideas that you had that you started and stopped on books <laughs> I should find like all the old titles. We kept changing every time. Um, and part of it was like really tied to like what I was learning at the time. Like I remember learning about like information marketing. Like you can create things and sell. I was like, this is great. So I did that. We started that direction. I think one of them was like, uh, don't dig for gold or something like that was the name of the product. And it was like, it had to do with that whole story about the gold rush. And so that was like one of them. And then I tried later when I started getting more interested in like, in like, lead generation getting people to do things you know and sales kind of shifted towards that and just anyway it kind of morphed until yeah and my biggest problem is that i was i also didn't want to write a book like you write it and then like it's obsolete like six months later so i was like we couldn't yeah. do any of the traffic stuff because it was so you know those things changed so much and i didn't want to like have to keep like making additions to my book you know i want something that was evergreen and it wasn't until we really started getting into that that it was like this is the core message that can stand the test of time that'll be just as relevant today as it is 10 years from now. And that was kind of the thought behind it. Got it. Now, what was it that gave you the kick in the pants to finally do it? Was it that conversation with a chiropractor? Like, did you decide at that dinner, Hey, this is something I'm doing. Or did you think about it for a while? Like what made you finally go all in and, and complete it? No, it was, it was that night. Um, it's kind of funny. Like, um, one of my friends, Brandon Bouchard, he's got a like, couple books and stuff. And we were actually talking, he's like, you're different between you and Brandon he's got a book. And I was like, you're right, man. Like, I don't have a book. Like, that's just something you've got to have. And so that night, like I went home, it was like, we were eating at a Burger King. We had all, he had his uh, three kids. I had my four kids at the time and they were, they're just going nuts. Our wives were out like in a movie or something. And we're just like hanging out there, like watching the kids go crazy. I was like, you're right. I, I've been saying this for 10 years, like it's happening. And so that night I went online 
I was like, I need to find someone to help me with this because there's no way I'm going to just get I need someone that I can pay to like hold me accountable and push things forward. And so I went out and I started looking for somebody and I found the right person, um, a lady named, um, named Julie that just came and became like my partner in this book and just helped me to like push it forward and like whether I wanted to or not. And the times I was ready to just quit, she was like, no, like you got to finish this. So it was, it was awesome. How long was the process of writing it? Um, for me, I'm kind of a perfectionist, so uh, it took me about a year to do it. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, I wrote a whole bunch of it and then didn't like it. And then, uh, so then I decided, I was like, if I'm gonna do this, like, I need to organize my thoughts better. Cause I was kind of going all over the place and then we just deleted it all, right? So I was like, I'm gonna do an event. Cause if I do an event, it's gonna force me to organize everything. So we did a three day event um, that forced me now to to really think like chronologically, like what would be the, the process. So I went and taught a three day event, recorded the whole thing. And then I had like, it was good, but then I was like, I, I think I need to move things around. And so I was able to shift around kind of the concepts. And then I felt like really secure, like this is what it needs to be. And then went and started writing from there. And then like, I was almost done with like, almost like the publishing phase. And I was listening to a podcast with uh, Tim Ferriss and, and uh, Neil Patel, no, not Neil Patel, Neil uh, Strauss mm -hmm. about how they write books. And these guys are like, I don't know if you've ever read any of them, but they're like intense writing books. Like they spent like three or four years writing books. They write like, you know, 5,000 pages and they chop it down to like 500. And I was like, oh man. And, but one thing they, they told me is they said like one of the best things about their book was like by like cutting things out. And one night I was like, you know what? Like there are parts of my book that I don't love. And so I went that night and I just deleted like three chapters. And I was just like, first I was scared. And then afterwards I was like, so liberated. Like those chapters were driving me crazy. Now they're gone. And, and it was just like the coolest thing. So anyway, but it took me about a year from when I started it till when the book actually launched and we started uh, selling the books and getting them out there. And so when you cut the chapters, then you didn't have enough. So then you had to write more. Or <laughs> yeah. I did have some gaps. Like I had some things like uh, we talked about, like if you read the book, I talked about value ladders in one spot and I started talking about funnels later on. And, and it might had to make perfect sense. And as I started thinking about like, like there are two concepts are similar, but they don't, there needs to be something to bridge that gap. So I had to write a chapter in the middle to then take like, how does this value ladder concept work with the sales funnel? How do you plug those two things together? It's kind of made something to bridge those two thoughts. And anyway, it's kind of, you know, all, all those things you, as you read it again, you're like, wait, this doesn't make sense in this context or in this order. And yeah. Got it. So you took the time, took about a year, got a good book. Um, obviously something that helped people understand the concept of funnels you know, when we're looking at the business side of things, like what was the business purpose for the book? Yeah. Um, so th uh, there, for me, there are a lot of purposes. Mm -hmm. uh, so we'll talk about kind of the funnel that we took people through and it'll kind of help illustrate some of those things as well. But, um, you know, one of it was the credibility piece, obviously, like that was a big thing. Uh, second was lead generation. Like when we did it, we sold 25,000 copies of the book in a month. So we had 25,000 brand new customers that entered our, our world, which, you know, we talk about numbers later, but that, that had a whole huge impact. Um, and then, um, what's a bigger motivation for me, uh, you mentioned we have a software company that helps you a bit is the tool that, that makes all the stuff possible. Right. And, uh, and so that's the bigger play for me more than, I mean, we made a lot of upfront money from the whole thing, but the longer term is like getting people educated and, and using click funnels as a tool um is worth way more to me long term and so it was a huge customer acquisition not just for my coaching company but for our our software and getting people because because like with click funnels um it's not something you're just like oh click funnels i'm in you start doing something right there's you have to understand a couple core things so it gave you anyone that read the book like you get it now you're like wow like this is what i need this is why i need this how it all goes together and it just it makes sense right and so um that was a uh some of the some of the, the business purposes behind it initially when we when we started deciding to actually do it and invest the time and money to do it. Got it. So it sounds like some of the main ones are authority and then drive into click funnels. Were there anything else on that side? And then driving to our high end coaching programs. I mean, we had, uh, I'm actually flying out um, Sunday night. I'm flying to a guy. He read the book, called me up and wrote, wrote a check for hundred thousand dollars for me to come spend two days teaching the book to his, his uh, staff. So it's like things like that just kind of like falling out of the air, which is really fun. So there's that, but we've also added a whole bunch of people. We have we have smaller coaching. We have a twelve thousand dollar a year and a twenty five thousand dollar coaching program, and it's um, we filled up a whole other mastermind group so far from that, and a bunch of other cool stuff. So uh, yeah, it's fueling it's fueling all those other sub businesses for sure. That's awesome. Now 
you talked about selling 25,000 copies in the first month. And, and I remember seeing pictures and stuff of the, of the warehouse full of books and all I mean, that's a lot of books and a lot of physical books to fulfill. Um, so I want to dive a little bit into the market and then we'll really circle back um, and go deep into the back, back end funnel monetizing all that. But on the marketing end, you did a, a big pre like pre-sales push. Can you tell us a little bit about that and kind of what that looked like? Yeah, um, so we were trying to uh, like work with our publisher. We had like a publisher date. Like this is the date it goes live. And uh, we wanted to pre-sell as many as we could before that date. So that way, um, yeah, they could all ship at the same time and makes it look better for for the different lists and stuff you're trying to get on, you know. Um, and so that's kind of what we were doing. So we did a 30-day pre-launch. And um, and I didn't want to leave anything to chance. And so um, I, I actually won a Ferrari two years ago in a sales contest for a company that was launching. And so... And this Ferrari sitting in my garage. I'm not really a car guy. So I was like, I'm going to give away my Ferrari to whoever can sell the most books, which is like a really fun thing, right? And I know most people can't do that. It's ridiculous. But I, I thought like, let's just do that. Like, it'll be kind of a cool thing and it'll help drive drive the sales of it. Like, I don't want to, again, I don't want to leave it to chance, right? So um, what we did, one of the concepts we did when you're looking at like how we marketed the book, um, there's a, a concept that I teach all my, my students and everyone, all of our coaching clients called the dream 100, where we try to find like, who are our dream 100, um, partners who can sell stuff with us or for us, you know? So I had this list of here's a hundred of my dream clients. And, uh, we wrote, I wrote a big, huge package. I had a copy of the book in there. I had, um, a t-shirt, I had like a big old package and we mailed it all. Um, well for me, it's, uh, we have about 220 people on my dream 100 list, right? So I sent it 220 packages to everyone that had this. Had the book, had a T-shirt, a bunch of stuff, and a big old letter saying, "I'm giving away my Ferrari. Whoever can give away the most copies of my book, and it's going to be amazing." Anyway, so we kind of like started the buzz uh, two months or so before the book launch, and then uh, people got excited, and and uh, it was cool. I think it was fun for people because it was a free book, so it was kind of a fun offer to promote. Plus, there's like this big prize, and we had a bunch of people competing and fighting for it, which made it more fun. And so that was kind of the that's kind of how it started. And then when we um, when the page went live, we did it. It was a, um, a free plus shipping book. So we didn't charge, I think we charged $7.95, I believe, shipping and handling on it. And um, and that's how it kind of kicked off and started going. And people were fighting and battling to try to sell the most copies of the book, which is a great spot to be in on the other side of us trying to sell them. And uh, yeah, that's kind of how the initial uh, marketing campaign kind of launched. Now, I, I remember seeing... Uh seeing that just all over and seeing just some hilarious uh some hilarious things i know oh gosh i'm forgetting who it is um here in san diego um but he can rap business um brian costanzo he oh, yeah. had some hilarious videos i mean and then there were just tons of videos obviously all around and then talk, people talking about the ferrari and all that so i know that created a huge buzz up front yeah. Besides the Ferrari and that contest, what else was in it for those affiliates in the, in the Dream 100 for sending people to the book? Yeah, I knew that like um, the big problem, like a big car contest. I've done a couple of them in my career. The biggest problem is like one or two people are going to win it, right? So you get, you get a couple people who are like fighting for it and everyone else is like, well, I'm not going to win it. So they don't want to try. So we like, we got to figure out something else awesome to help them. So we, um, any one of the, the top 20 affiliates, we took them all to Vegas uh, together so they could all hang out together. We took them uh, dream car racing. So we all got to race Ferraris and Lamborghinis. And and that was really a really cool process anyway. But that gave everyone like some incentive to come. And then we also paid out commissions. So um, we'll talk about the funnel in a minute. So we had a funnel. And the first uh, three weeks of it, we paid out basically, I think I think it was 40 or 50% of anything that they people bought inside of that funnel. And so they, they made commissions there. And then the last week, we switched over to like a – to like a CPA model where it said for every book you give away, you just get a flat $20 and people went nuts with that. Like it, it was <laughs> really cool. Like we were giving away, man, 20, 30, $40,000 a day in cash prizes, the cash basically for everyone. Cause every book they gave away, they got 20 bucks. People simply were doing a thousand books a day. And we're just like, um, but luckily our, our funnel, our funnel could, could, uh, could sustain it. Cause we were actually mm -hmm. averaging, I think, I think when I was said and done, we were averaging, I believe $32, we made for every free book we give away that we gave away from the funnel. So we weren't actually losing money, but it got, it really motivated the affiliates and got people doing some crazy things or like some of the videos are just nuts what people are doing to give away books. And uh, <laughs> which is so much fun. Like every morning I wake up and there's like 50 people tagging me, like with like whatever their crazy idea was. And yeah, it was, it was so much fun. 
That's hilarious. So did you wait? And I'm curious why you switched over from the, the percentage model to the CPA model. Did you wait and see how it was dialed in and then figure out what you could afford? Or did you, was there a different reason? Did you plan that all along? Like, how was that? Yeah, it was a little bit of all that. Like we've done, we've done free book offers in the past and it, we knew we could, we could probably handle $20 CPA and s without going in the hole at all. Um, but we wanted to have some, a fun reason people to promote at the end of the contest because it's hard. The hardest thing is like get people re-excited. Like, why should you, you know, promote some more? Why should you, they be buying more ads? Like what's the reason? And so if we started that way, then we, we lost the ability to be like, Oh, here's this cool new thing, you know? And, uh, and so it just kind of, a, it was more of, I mean, we, I think from day one, we knew we were going to do that. Um, so part of it was testing to make sure that like the funnel actually was making money before we just give away $20. And then partially was just so we had a really cool like way to, to end it out and to, to close out the, that, uh, that little contest. So what percentage would you say of, of pre-sales were off of affiliates versus off of other, like other, you know, traffic, your internal list, all that stuff? Um, oh, that's a good question. I would say... I would say that probably a fifth of the books that we sold from our own traffic and our own promotions, our own lists. So probably five or 6,000 that w were based on that. And then the other 20,000 or so came from, from affiliates and we had affiliates, all sorts of affiliates. Some of that had big email lists, like Jeff Walker ended up winning. He's had a big email list. Uh, guys like Todd Brown took second place and man, he was, he had the coolest strategy. He, he was uh, doing, uh, webinars and hangouts and Facebook ads and Google ads and YouTube ads. And like, he was like multi-pronged approach hitting it from every single angle. In fact, he ended up losing by like I think 30 books at the end is, is all he lost by. It was like, <laughs> it felt so bad. He was, he did awesome. But, uh, and, and some affiliates who just, you know, every, everyone had a kind of different strategy. So it was cool because it, it made us look like we were everywhere, even though we weren't everywhere. Like we were doing a lot, like we were pushing it as hard as we could on our side, but there was just people coming from, there's so many other directions doing stuff that made it look like everywhere you looked, we were somewhere, you know, and it was, it was fun watching, um, the creativity from, from uh, our affiliates on it. And what were some of the things that you guys were doing personally to push the book? Uh, we were doing all sorts of, we were doing, uh, we were trying a lot of like, uh, more traditional strategies too. Like we were doing radio interviews, uh, podcast interviews, which I had never really done that before. Um, and that worked really good. We had, uh, like I was on the Entrepreneur on Fire podcast and he sold like 850 copies of the book just from one one little interview that was like, he does like one a day. So just like one little blurb, but that fast we got yeah. many. And so we we're doing a lot of those kind of things. Um, we were doing, uh, what else were we doing? Just, yeah, a little bit of, a little bit of everything. Uh, going back to like, um, we did some direct mail stuff. We were dropping postcards to keep people's buyer lists. We were doing, uh, uh, yeah, just hitting from as many different angles as possible. In fact, it was funny because we had people coming back like, how in the world did you get my physical address? Like I had postcards popping in my mail for your book. I was like, <laughs> it was like, like we had people that, that wouldn't or they couldn't mail their email list. I was like, well, how about we send a postcard to all of your physical buyers? I'll cover the printing and the cost and you just send your Excel sheet of your buyers to the, to the post office and we'll mail postcards and like, all right, why not? And so we were just hitting people from all sorts of angles. It was fun. Wow, that's a great idea. I love that. Yeah. So those are people with big lists that just couldn't or wouldn't for some reason mail their email list. Yeah. Yeah. And that happens all the time, like bad timing or they just don't want to promote something else, whatever. So, but most of them have a cus like buyer list. And so I just say, Hey, you got a buyer list. I will pay for the printing, the shipping, everything. I'll put your affiliate link on the postcard. All you have to do is export your buyers, email the CSV file to this third party mailing house. I don't even see the list. I'll mail the postcard to them and they'll ship it out and you get paid commissions. And people, like, it's like, why would someone say no to that? There's no, there's no logical reason. You just say yes, right? <laughs> yeah, that's great. Where where did you come up with that idea? Um, I when I got started online, like I was like the internet nerd, and then I joined like this, the whole Dan Kennedy world and Bill Glazer world, and and um and just those guys like drilled direct response, like hardcore marketing in my head for man ten years. And so I, it's funny like nowadays I talk to internet guys, and I feel like I'm more of like an offline guy than an internet guy just because of my brainwashing all those years. But we used to do that kind of things with uh, with uh, Bill Glazer all the time, like because he they had really strict rules on what they promote and not promote, and so we used to do promotions all the time just their physical list because he he was way more open to that, and so uh, like like he would do that to our list, like he would um he would pay for direct mail piece to go to my buyer list, and I get affiliate commissions on he'd cover everything, and then I'd do the same thing to his list, and we mail out stuff physically to his, and we just kind of swap on that, and uh, we did that for years, and it was awesome. So did you learn your direct mail chops from Dan Kennedy and those guys? Oh yeah, 100%. Yeah.
Yeah, Bill, I, Bill Glazer. So he, he was my, when I joined GKIC, Bill Glazer was like, it was like my mentor for like six or seven. He still is. I, oh, I love him so like my marketing cool. dad. And he used to like, we'd go to the meetings and, and he'd like hold up letters. He's like, hey, Russell, you ever seen one of these before? This is called a uh, you know, sales letter. This is direct mail. And he said rag on me all the time. But uh, definitely I'm a big believer in that now and a big fan of it. So is that how you got uh, Dan Kennedy to write the forward for your book? Yeah, yeah. Basically paid him a whole bunch of money for a lot of years. And then, <laughs> no, but like, yeah, we were, uh, we were actually talking about maybe doing a book together. Um, and, uh, and I said, hey, I've got, I've got a marketing book like I'm doing and just love for you to look at it. He was like, Russell, I don't like internet marketing books. Like you guys are all, what do you call them? You guys are all like charlatans and wizards and weird things. I don't believe in it. I was like, I know, but like I promise my book's different. So I sent it to him. And of course with Dan, you can't like email it to him. They don't, he does not have a physical email address. You have to fax mm -hmm. him. Like print the whole, the whole thing and then like fax scan it to him. <laughs> and he gets it like, he goes to his assistant and then puts it in a box and he, she FedExes it to him. Then he gets it, opens it up, reads the whole thing. He types out, I think on a typewriter or something, types out the forward and then um, FedEx is it back to his assistant who then uh, overnighted it to me. And uh, I was like, can you just email it to me? She's like, we don't do email in our office. I was like, are you kidding me? Like, <laughs> there's no way. And so like, yeah, so I had to go then like retype it from like this fax thing, type it the whole, like retype the whole thing so I can have a digital version of it. It was ridiculous. That's yeah, hilarious. That's how it works in that world. So. <laughs> Oh, that's great. How'd you get a, how'd you get Tony Robbins to, um, do a blurb for the book? Um, so Tony is like by far the coolest man on earth. Right. And so I was been blessed um, a couple of years ago. Some of my friends, Mike Keenig, a couple of guys introduced me to him and, uh, we were, we kind of, were going to do a project back then together. He, he just launched like this front end thing and we we're going to help build out a sales team for him. And it never actually materialized for some reason. And then, uh, and then he invited me to come speak at one of his events. So I spoke there. So kind of just got to know him and, done some little consulting for his company a couple of times. And, uh, and then, um, yeah, then he basically, when I got, when I got done, I actually asked him initially, I'm like, Hey, would you be willing to write the forward for the book? And he said, actually, I'm writing my book right now. I wish I could, but I don't have time. But he's like, I would love to look it out. So I gave it to him and he's like, this is good stuff. And he's like, here's, here's something you can use. So he gave me kind of a quote. And I was like, Oh, that's amazing. So yeah, that's what we use. In fact, what's cool is, um, I don't know if I can, I can probably share this publicly. Um, we, um, we're flying out next month to uh, the whole book funnel process we're talking about now, um, we're applying it for his, he did a free plus shipping book launch earlier this year and uh, he just brought us and we're coming in, we're flying our whole team down there um, in August and we're building out a whole book funnel for him um, through click funnels and stuff, which is gonna be cool. So um, anyway, but yeah, he's, he's amazing. <laughs> Anything he does, I'm like just grateful. So yeah, he wrote a little blurb and it was amazing. <laughs> That's awesome. Now let's go back to what you were talking about, which was, the direct mail pieces, the internal lists, all the different things you guys did to promote on your side beyond affiliates. Out of all those things that you guys did, um, which would you say was the most effective, move the most books? Man, that's a good question. I mean, obviously just our own internal list is, the, I mean, it's, it's your your warm audience who knows you and loves you. So that, that's a, a big part of it. Um, what was the most effective? Man, you know, th stuff was happening so fast. I don't even, we didn't do a lot of like close testing on sources. It was more like we had 30 day windows were thrown up. I don't know what, what would exactly be the most effective. I mean, I think honestly the most effective was, um, and it, you know, you said without affiliates, but it was the affiliate strategy. It was like every, every uh, like three weeks we mailed all the affiliates and something else, or excuse me, every two weeks, something else in the mail. So I didn't want to forget about promotion. So I did the book mm -hmm. and teacher at first. And then like a week, two weeks later, I mailed them all a Ferrari keychain. And then another week later, I sent the picture with me holding a $20, $20 bill talking about the $20 bill contest. So like I was, I was direct mailing my dream 100. Like I think that was the most effective strategy of all because people who had never promoted for us ever, all of a sudden, like after the first message they didn't, then the second message they did or the third or something, but it, it kept like, it's just hard to get affiliates, especially good affiliates to pay attention nowadays. Right. Email doesn't work. Facebook, like nothing works unless you're just like in front of them. And so we just ship packages to them. In fact, about once a month, we send a package to our dream, my dream 100. Um, and sometimes it's just like last month, we just sent them all gifts just saying you guys are awesome. And then this month we'll be sending them something, uh, asking them to promote a, a webinar and just we're consistently marketing to them. I think that's the best marketing strategy is finding your potential partners and building out a, a consistent campaign to them. Cause each one of those people could have turned into, you know, in some cases, three, four, 5,000 books. And so, um, 
Yeah. Got it. So are these affiliates mostly people who have promoted for you in the past or are some of them new? Um, our top new top two affiliates had never promoted me ever in their life. So mm. uh, Jeff Walker and Todd Brown never promoted for us before. Um, I'd say in our top 20, about half of them probably had. The other half were just new people who, yeah, who never. How'd, so how did you get the new people's addresses? Um, this is my secret. You go on Facebook and you're like, hey, man, I got a gift for you. What's the best place to send it? And they always send back their address. <laughs> it's awesome. Nobody ever says no to a gift. That's kind of like, that's honestly what we did. We spent probably a month. We, we built out a list of like everyone we could dream of that would be like our ideal partners and start hitting them up. That's how John Dumas for uh, Entrepreneur Life. I'd never met him. I listened to his podcast, but I, I didn't know him from Adam. I just saw him on Facebook. Hey man, what's your address? I want to send you a gift. And he just wrote back just the address, nothing else. So I like, all right, so we just add him to the list and then send out a package. And then two weeks later, Got an email saying, "Hey man, I want you on the podcast. How's this day?" And you know, just it happened. So, yeah, that's Facebook's good for getting people's initial attention, and then I think physical things in the mail is best to get their actual attention. <laughs> Got it. So, how do you systematize or streamline that process of consistently sending those affiliates mail? Yeah, so we just have uh, an Excel sheet, and then every month we're trying to add new people. That's what I said. My my Dream One Hundred list has grown to about two hundred and whatever twenty people, and just. Every time I meet new people, like I'm going to throw you on there now. Like every time I meet new people that are doing cool stuff, we just add them to the list. And then uh, once a month, uh, usually the very beginning of the month, um, unless I forget some months, which happens, but usually the beginning of the month, I sit down and I just write a four or five page letter in Microsoft Word, find something cool we can shove in a package, um, send them to a mailing house, and then they just ship them all out. And within a month or within a week, I start getting people like, hey, I got your cool thing. And I'm like, all right, everyone's getting them now. <laughs> <laughs> Cool. And so you're sending through a mailing house and then you're have, adding in little trinkets and a letter and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. You gotta make it. And otherwise no one's going to want to open them. You send them cool stuff. They always open it. And they're like, Oh, cool. Like, like the Ferrari keychain one. I, I didn't know that was going to do as well as it did, but yeah, we sent everyone just like, a. and then, by the way, it was hard to buy 230 Ferrari keychains on Amazon. Like one dude had like 10, so I buy 10 and then the next day like 10 more. So it took me like two or three months to get all of them here. It's kind of a nightmare. And some dude on Amazon's like, this is the hottest selling product ever. He probably ordered <laughs> like a million of them on Amazon and now he's got like a million in inventory. But yeah, so, uh, but that's kind of what we did. And then, yeah, and then we just have someone pack them all in. And you think about like direct mail seems really hard and complicated, but it's just as easy as email. Like I email over the Word doc. If we had a bunch of stuff, we just ship that somewhere and then some dudes put it all together and mail it all out. And I don't know how it happens, but it's just like sending an email. <laughs> so are you always, is there always an ask? Is it a, just because like how often are you asking them to mail or asking them to do something like that? Um, just depends. Like it's never like asking directly. It's just kind of saying, Hey, this was cool. We've got like last month I didn't do anything cause we just finished the book launch and stuff and I didn't want to just keep. So I just sent them uh, we, we had written, I wrote a pretty cool newsletter about some stuff. And so I sent them a newsletter, some DVDs, a bunch of free stuff that was just in our shipping house. And I shipped it all out and said, Hey, here's a gift. Thanks for being awesome. And then, uh, yeah, so we did that. We'll probably do that again this month, maybe. And then we got a big webinar that's crushing it right now uh, for ClickFunnels. So I'll probably just next month send out or two months send out a letter saying, hey, here's the stats. Here's the last five people to the webinar, how much money they made with conversion rates. And if you want to do it, give us a call. We'd love to have you on board. And so, and by the way, here's a free cool thing because you're cool, <laughs> you know? And that's kind of kind of it. The biggest thing like with marketing, with especially if, and I'm not a big fan of affiliate stuff because like I don't like to reciprocate. I don't like doing it. So it's, it's hard that way. And so, the only way to get people to like promote stuff is you got to do cool things. You got to have people think you're cool and just, and so the more cool stuff you can do to people like that, the more likely they are to, to help in return, you know? So it's kind of how I look at it. <laughs> got it. Now did the book do better or, or worse than you expected? Better. Uh, my goal initially was uh, 15,000 copies. And so we did another 10 and it's, it's still selling right now. I think we sold another two or 3000 since the big launch part of it was done. It's just been there. And uh, we're, we're actually focusing on a, a whole radio campaign right now. We're going to be focusing on a couple other things, but still organically selling. But yeah, definitely did better than than I had I had hoped for. And out of, so you obviously had 25,000 pre-release copies. What did that breakdown look like, like between pre-release and then launch week and then month one? Like what, what did that look like? So it was, uh, that's a good question. Um, most of the, the, the initial 25,000 all happened um, during that first month because what happened as soon as launch day hit, then we had, um, based on like the publisher rules, like it was kind of annoying. So we had to like 
stop like our sales funnel and then transition the page over to like uh, where it said like buy on Amazon or Borders or whatever. Like they like otherwise they're not going to get any love and they're not going to put you on the bookshelves. Or, I don't know. So as soon as launch they hit, and we had to put those up there. Then all sales start coming through all these channels. I don't honestly know how to track those. I have no idea how many. Yeah, I know we, yeah. get, we get Excel sheets from the publisher every month that has like a bunch of you know X amount of thousand that were sold to that. But I don't know. I didn't look close enough to know exactly where they came through. And then about two weeks later, then we flip back on the the um, the normal sales funnel, and then we think that like three or four thousand come through since then. So yeah, that's kind of. Russell, yeah. you should know your numbers better on this. <laughs> well, let's talk about the back end because um, that's obviously the the big money maker for this book launch and a big purpose behind this and the reason you're able to give $20 CPAs and, and all these different things. So what did the back end look like on off of the book? Yeah, so um, so I call, I call this concept funnel stacking, right? So there were three core funnels that were in this process. So the first funnel was just the book launch funnel, and uh, it was a free book. But we made um, a little over thirty-two dollars for every book. Excuse me, every book we gave away. So that was the first funnel. So if you look at how it worked, uh, the book was free plus shipping, and then on the order form there was a bump that said, "Hey, do you want the audiobook version for an extra thirty-seven bucks?" And uh, twenty-two percent of the people who bought the book also bought the audiobook version, which boom gave us more upfront cash. Then we had upsell immediately after that for one hundred ninety-seven dollars for our traffic course. And then upsell for two ninety seven for our uh, webinar sales course, and uh, so from that little that sequence, like I said, we averaged thirty two dollars per customer. Um, so that was that was funnel number one. And then when they finished that process, then uh, about fourteen days later, then we invited them to a webinar that is the webinar we use to sell click funnels. And so um, uh, it's kind of hard to know exactly because the way the way the webinar funnel works. Someone registers for the webinar, and then we have three video emails trying to get them to create a free trial to ClickFunnels, and uh, and then from that, then they jump on uh, jump on the webinar, and we sell a year access for a thousand dollars with some training and stuff like that, and um, and uh, so we we uh, typically sell about for every for every thousand dollar package we sell on the webinar, three people signed up for the trial, and so um, I think I'm trying to remember exactly what the campaign was. We did it twice during the launch because it was, you know, it's kind of staggered. Like two weeks came in, then we did the webinar, and then two weeks. So the webinar twice. I think that we did. Was it end up being? I think about six hundred thousand dollars from the actual webinar sales. If I if I remember right, and then, which would have been what six six hundred uh, six hundred people bought there, which means eighteen hundred people. Uh, signed up for the dollar trial, and then now they're getting, they're paying uh, ninety seven dollars a month. So whatever stick there. So I don't know exact exact cash flow, but that was the second funnel, um, which is where the first big majority of the money came from. Actually, uh, the the biggest part of the money came from from that. And then after that campaign ends, then two weeks later, then we invite people to come apply for our coaching program, and uh, and it's kind of a sort of soft sell where they come, they watch a video from one of our students who's had success with us, and then can apply to work with me. And then we got guys on our team who call them up, and from there we sell a twelve thousand uh, dollar, like a group coaching program, a twenty five thousand dollar mastermind, and and the kind of one on one with me, or a hundred thousand dollar one, which is kind of depends what kind of custom for the for who who's buying it, right? And so from that, um, I don't know the exact numbers because that's like a longer sell. It's not like this happens sales right here. You know, some some sales take a day, some take three or four weeks. Just kind of depends. But I would say conservatively, at least another half million or more have actually a lot more than that. Anyway, a lot more came from from the back end, and that's kind of that's where all my funnels eventually lead to that because that's where we have a chance to work one on one and work really close with them, which is what we talk about in the book. The goal is to get them into your back end funnel so you can give them the biggest results and uh, help serve them the most. So, so that's your your main thing. Would you say is is the end goal of coaching, or would that be click funnels? Um, so coaching, we make a lot more money up front. Um, I realistically don't think I'll be coaching for more than another year or so. ClickFunnels is growing so rapidly that it's, it, I, I just want have time to keep doing one-on-one coaching or not one-on-one, but the, the coaching stuff. And so, um, right now it, it is like the big back end, So the big high ticket thing. Um, but a bigger goal for me, I think is the, is the click funnels cause the continuity is so high and it's just recurring and, and it grows and takes way less effort on, on my side to fulfill on. So. Um, but as of right now, definitely everything's leading to the high-end coaching. Um, but I don't think that'll be that way probably in a year from now. 
Got it. Cause right when you sell them on click funnels, it's every, you know, they buy that book once get into click, click funnels and that's just consistent revenue for a long yeah. time. Yeah, exactly. And it's, I mean, click funnels since we launched, so we launched click funnels like eight or nine months ago. And so it was, it was growing. And then the book just gave it this like shot of adrenaline, but we're right now at 8,000 active members in click funnels and it's nuts. Like I've never <laughs> been part of some, and that's not people who have like, signed up and left. Like we've had over 30,000 who signed up and canceled, but 8,000 who are actively paying month in and month out. And it's, it's uh, we're adding about 200, pe 200 trials a day right now, just organically from all this stuff. So um, yeah, like eventually like it won't make any sense to do anything else besides that. It's getting close to that now, but yeah, uh, it's just awesome. So on the audio book, that was one of the first things you talked about. Um, how are you able to charge 37 bucks and, and have people buy it so much? Is it because it was, it was pre-release or like, hey, how'd you get away with that? <laughs> there's this magic chapter in here that actually teaches that. So there's a, there's a concept that, that uh, we kind of pioneered a couple years ago called an order form bump where someone goes to your order form, they fill it out and it has to be like after they put their credit card number in because before that it screws everything up. Like your conversions will drop and everything. But if they, if they put in their credit card, then right be, between the, the credit card form and the submit button, there's a little block that's like, hey, how would you like to have blah for an extra 37 bucks? Uh, and that, that's basically, it's like two sentences. Um, uh, people just say yes to that. Like, it's like easy, it's like you're at the, your your grocery store checking out and you're like, oh, some gum, I might as well get some gum, right? It just it just works like that. And so, um, I mean, we still have that on the page now. People are still taking it about 20, like I said, 22% during the launch took it. And it's pretty similar numbers now. Um, but yeah, it's just, they get the audiobook version so they can listen to it. and. I'm the same way. I, like if I had a book and I had an audiobook version, I'd buy it every time because I, I consume things audiobook different or more, more likely to consume it that way. But it was kind of a funny story. Like I was trying to figure out what my order form bump was going to be for like the entire pre-launch stuff. And then a week before launch, I was like, what, what if I did the, like an audiobook version? And I'm like, I don't even know how to make an audiobook book version. And, and so I'm like, I'm like, well, I got to record it somewhere. So I like, I guess I could like record it with my little mic here. But I'm like, like people are going to hear like the, all the other noise and driving by. So I'm calling around all over Boise to see if there's someone that has like a sound studio. And finally there's this, these dudes who, uh, they, they record like, uh, bands and CDs and stuff, but he's like, Hey, next Wednesday, like there's no band coming in. So if you want, you can come record your book on Wednesday, but like you only have Wednesday, like, like if it bleeds to Thursday, like there's bands coming in and you lost your shot. And, uh, and I was like, okay, I need that, but I need someone to edit it and get it back to me by Friday. Cause we launched on Monday or whatever it was. Right. And, and so I'd like pay way more for that. But anyway, I come in the thing and, Came at like seven o'clock in the morning, and I spent like I don't know eighteen hours reading this whole book. It was like <laughs> the worst, most painful thing of my life. And the guy's like, you know, typical authors do this over like a week period of time. I'm like, we don't have a week. Like the launch is happening, and so I'd read the whole book, and like I kept like getting tired, so it's like take supplements, to like wake me up, and like keep energy, so I could read the whole book in one sitting with like energy. So we got it done. Then the guy had to edit it like crazy, and the couple parts I screwed up on, so I'd come back in and like say like one word like twice you know, like you know funnel funnel so you could like edit it right and anyway it was crazy and then like the a couple hours before launch they sent me the final file i'm like oh and we plugged it in and it just <laughs> magically worked but it worked great like you look at what's 22 percent of twenty five thousand. is that 20 see 10 percent would be 25 so five thousand yeah. five thousand people paid 37 bucks for so that's like a hundred you know it's over six figures by adding a little bump in there. So it was definitely worth a day of pain to, to do and put in there. And then people loved it. Like we had people who bought the book and because it was pre-launch, they didn't get the book for 30 days or 45 days sometimes. So they had chances. chance to, some people said, I listened to the audiobook 10 times before the book showed up. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. So I don't know, people, people liked it. And I had people who bought the book and then later come back and bought a second copy of the book just so they can get the audio book the second time just because like it's a huge value add that it's only available right there. Got it. So what made you decide to do the audiobook yourself? Um, time. I don't know how to like hire someone. To, and I do like, I do a lot of voiceovers for like my sales videos and my webinar, like those kind of things anyway. And so like I knew how to, re, like how I wanted it read. I'm kind of picky on things like that. I've tried to hire voiceover people in the past to read like sales scripts and I always screw it up. So I'm like, you know, I'm just going to do it. And, uh, and that's just kind of why short timing. And I want to make sure that they said things right. Plus actually funny enough, like, um, as I was doing it, like I found the mistakes when I was reading through it. So I like, I, I was editing while we did it. And then I got home that night, I was like sending the, to the editor. I'm like, I know like it's way past like my last deadline to, to send in tweaks, but I found like eight more things we got to fix. 
And so they fixed things and then shipped, you know, and then before they actually went to print, which was perfect. And then uh, the, only, the only mistake we had was like, there was the, a Kindle version for like two weeks that had like those eight mistakes and finally got those fixed and then re-uploaded to Kindle or however, I don't know how that works, but yeah, <laughs> it was kind of crazy, but it, it worked out in the end. Now, did you ad lib or did you just straight, straight to the book? Um, for the most part, I went straight to the book. There are a couple times, like I listened to, um, to one of Gary Vaynerchuk's books. A couple times he would like he'd slip off cue and like drop some more gold. So I did that a couple times, not a lot, because uh, just because of the stress of the moment. And then, but uh, I, I tried a couple times to be like just slip a little gold in there for those who are listening. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. I, that's always fun uh, from uh, from a listener standpoint. Like, oh, it, I got something new. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And with Gary, it's like, oh, check out this rant, like <laughs> or whatever. It's always funny. Yeah. So let's talk about the back end a little bit more. Um, you touched on this a little bit, but wh which part of that funnel, which product, or we can even go funnel or product specific, whichever you want, um, but which one made the most money and the most back end revenue from the book? Um, I think the, mo the one that made most was the, was the webinar, which was the second funnel. Um, definitely was the least, for me, because like we, we sell, you know, we sell it for $1,000 and all the fulfillment's already done. So they bought it like, the, they're in the software. So for me, that's my favorite just because I didn't have to do any extra work with the high end coaching stuff. Like I have a lot of work, you know, like I'm flying out, spend two days with these guys that read, you know, that pays a hundred thousand dollars. I got a lot of prep work to, to prepare for, you know, so it's like, as far as like the most amount of money for the least amount of work, definitely the, the second piece, which was the webinar selling a thousand dollar offer, which I think anyone can do. Um, I had a call yesterday with a, with a lady who's got a book that's taking off right now, uh, but she has no monetization strategy at all. In fact, Tony Robbins introduced me to her and was like, you need to help this lady. <laughs> and, uh, and that's her thing, she had nothing to sell. I'm like, you gotta figure out like some kind of how-to thing that you can sell, that you can um, you can plug into here. And she didn't have anything. We're trying to like figure out what it was because her book was not fiction, but it was like, whatever the genre is, they talk about stuff, but there's not like a, I don't wanna say there's not a point, but there's not like, like here's how to do something cool, right? So I'm like, you have to take this thing you wrote that isn't how to, but figure out like, how do you turn that into something sellable now? Cause that's what you'll pay for it. I mean, people will buy a novel and, and read it, but unless there's like a how-to component, they're not gonna pay you 500 or a thousand or a hundred thousand dollars unless you've got something there. So it's figuring out like what makes sense there. And uh, selling stuff on webinars is, is typically pretty easy and, and fun and uh, yeah. Got it. So, and I imagine that not only upfront in the first month or few months is the most value, but then also long-term customer, va lifetime customer value is probably a lot higher too, right? Yeah, definitely. Definitely for that. I mean, the nice thing about ClickFunnels is that our stick rate is so good. Like after somebody, if somebody actually logs in software and does one thing, then they never leave. And so, yeah, for us, it's awesome. Sometimes continuity programs aren't that way. Some signs up and they leave in a month or two, but with for us, definitely that's uh, because the stick rate's so good, it's been the best. And especially, I mean, you set up a funnel in there. It's kind of a, a big switching cost to <laughs> leave, right? You got to reset up the whole thing. That's something Bill Glazer used to always pound in my head. He said, if you want a good continuity program, you have to have big pain and disconnect. And I've tried for 10 years to have one, but I've never had like a really good one until now. Now it's like, you built your business in there. Like, like I could not live without ClickFunnels right now. Like if it, I, if, if I came back to myself and said, Russell, I want you to pay a million dollars a month, I'd have to pay it because you know I mean? everything I own is in there. Not that I, not that we're ever going to do that or that we would, but um, you know, that's kind of the goal is make something so good that, that people can't live without it. And if you do that, then they'll stick for forever. Hopefully. That's why we're still, that's why we're still in it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you touched a little bit on this on dive down just a little bit deeper. You said, Webinars because those are easy, fun, and always convert like crazy. You got a couple of tips for how you crush webinars and how they convert so well? Yeah, in fact, in uh, in the book I share my webinar script. But um, actually, if your listeners want, we have all oh, the funnel. But um, I, I have a script that that literally took me. It's not it's not mine. It's it's me working with probably twenty different um, selling from stage coaches to make my pitch perfect, and uh, and I call it the perfect webinar. And it's uh, it's. It's a con again. It's, it's it's a compilation of me standing up on stage in front of people and selling and bombing over and over and over again and getting humiliated, and not making any money, and then having amazing mentors say, "Hey, try this and try this," and then me going through courses and home and, and ten years of all of this to the point where I got something where I we call it a perfect webinar because like I can plug anything in. In fact, um, there's this really cool supplement that I am in. I'm obsessed with it right now. I've got all my friends and family members on it. It's like the best thing in the world. 
And I was like, I got to sell this because it's just too good. I'm like, how did I sell this? I'm like, oh, plug it into the perfect webinar. And I just took the script, plug it in, and it just works. Like it sells everything. Like we sold the certification program at our live event, did a half million dollars in sales from that, from the perfect webinar. Like I literally took it out the script, plugged in the pieces, and then it just works. So there's my pitch for the perfect webinar. You guys can get it for free. Like we, we give away, it's, it's four bucks. We ship you out a physical page with a DVD teaching the whole thing. If you search for perfect webinar, you'll see it. Um, but that's it. And it's, it's really simple process. Basically, um, the way the script works is, is we help you, you have to figure out like, like what are the three core beliefs that your prospect has that are wrong? If you can figure out those three things, you've got a million dollar pitch and everyone's got that, right? If you're in the weight loss space, we just, we just got a perfect webinar working for a guy, uh, in the weight loss space. And so we figure out like, what are the three core beliefs that your prospects have that are, they're wrong. Like if you can figure out those three things and everyone's got them, right? Then mm, you, just, yeah. Then the 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 content of the um, of the of the training basically. I wonder if I have a copy of the script right here. Probably don't. Dang it. Well, somewhere I gotta have it. Anyway, if I could show it to you, you'd see it right here. Um, but but that's what because most people like they get into to doing their webinar and they're sitting there like teaching all this stuff and trying to show how smart they are and trying to do and that doesn't serve people. Like what serves people is saying like. These are the three things that you think are right, they're wrong. And then you show like this is what's wrong. And then you, you flip it and you teach them the, the correct way. Like this is what it actually is. And they're like, whoa, and they have an epiphany, right? You take the second thing and you show them their false belief. You break it, you flip it around, you give it another epiphany, like, whoa. And then same thing, number three, you do that three times in a row. Um, after that, pretty much they'll say yes to anything you you tell them about. Because you just proven like that their paradigm is wrong. And you shift that paradigm three times for them, and then you transition. There's a really easy way we transition into how we sell it and how we close it. And uh, I would say we probably have at least a hundred of our of our coaching clients right now who um, all they do is a perfect webinar, and they do it every they, every week. Like it's a, it's like a system. Every Thursday they do the webinar. They spend Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday driving leads into the webinar. Thursday they do the webinar. Friday, Saturday, Sunday they do the replays, and it starts over on Monday. We've got uh, one of one of my favorite. Her name is Liz Benny. She lives in New Zealand. Um, she's doing between forty and fifty grand a week, week in week out, consistently. And uh, you know, six months ago she didn't have a webinar. She took the perfect webinar plugged it in, boom, and it's just off to the races. And so, yeah, when you learn that, and again, the script's, the script's in the book, but if you also want like the DVD training, it's, it's uh, I think it's perfectwebinarsecrets.com and for four bucks, we ship out the DVD, the thing, and then you just got it. And I always tell people like, if I could give like one gift to everyone, like that's it. Like more people have made more money in our coaching programs with that little piece of paper than anything else we've done. And it's, it's just magic. So that's how you sell on the webinar. You just, just follow it and don't screw it up because if you just do it, it just works every time. <laughs> That's cool. I'm I'm definitely gonna um, check that out because I was even thinking as you were as you were talking about that the like for for our business right self publishing school like what are the core beliefs? I don't have enough time to write a book. Uh, I'm not an expert. I can't write it. I don't have an audience. I can't sell it. Boom! You got what you needed. Boom! Boom! boom. <laughs> awesome. You just readjust their mindset three times, and anything else you ask them to do, they'll say yes to. It's it's. It's amazing. And again, this not, I just want to say like, I, I'm not taking credit for it other than me compiling this from some amazing mentors. Like each piece, I can tell you exactly who I learned things from. And I talk about it in, in the train DVD, I give credit to everyone, but uh, man, it just, it just works. And um, yeah, it's awesome. You'll love it, man. <laughs> That's great. A couple more questions. Um, what's one surprise way on the back end of the book that you didn't expect, but that you made money off of it? <laughs> um, that's a good question. One surprise way. Well, one was the dude who signed, who called us up and was like, Hey, I want you to come to my office for two days. And I was like, I don't have time for that. So I was like, uh, tell him a hundred thousand dollars. We'll do it. And he said, all right. And you wrote the check right then. <laughs> like, Crap. All right. That was surprising to me. Um, another one that's kind of fun is this little picture on here. So this picture came from this video we, we shot, um, which was kind of just like a, a fun dorky, video when i met this new video guy and he was like i want to do something really epically big so we did a shot it's, it's like 13 seconds on the sales video you'll see it um but it took us six hours to set up the shot get the lights the fog lights like it was six hours to set up time we sat down and filmed for like 30 seconds and broke the whole thing down if you look at the book launch but you see that scene and it's like it's i think it turned out amazing it's really cool yeah yeah um, and so afterwards like we we made these t-shirts just had a screenshot of this and it said i split test on it and um, that's when that's the shirt I sent out to all these people that had that. And anyway, I can't tell you how many people have like seen all these. I mean, my dream 100, like all the top marketers in the world, and they're always wearing the shirt since I split test on it. And everyone keeps coming like, where do I get that shirt? Where do I get that shirt? And so we set up, I can't, I don't even know where it's at. Someone set up a page for me that had the shirt people could just buy. 
And we sold tons of these things. They're just like <laughs> the shirt says I split test with the uh with that picture underneath it. So that was kind of surprising. Um yeah, so those are probably the two biggest surprises. So the, the, all those hours spent setting up that shoot were <laughs> worth it. Yeah, and funny thing, like at the time, I didn't know we were gonna use it for the book. Like it was just like this random thing because I don't even know why. We sometimes we do things just because it seems like it'll be cool, but we don't know why. And after it came back, I was like, like it was so cool. I was like, I want to show this to everyone, but I'm like, but I can't because I got to use something really, really cool. And uh, and that's about the time I was working on the cover design. And I was like, wait a minute. So I got, I grabbed a still shop in that video. I sent it to the design guy who's in the cover and he put it in there. I was like, oh, like that is, I was so excited. I was just going nuts. I was like, that's exactly what it is. And then, but I had to sit on that video clip for like six months, not show it to anyone because I knew it was going to be the book launch and it just, it killed me. I wanted to show it so bad. So I thought it was so cool. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. And what's, what's one unexpected way that the business has improved or the business has benefited off of the book? Um, let's see. I think that um, I, I'd say the biggest one is that um, it's uh, it, it's brought in a different type of customer to us. Um, the, the the type of person who reads books is different than the kind of person who watches like a video sales letter and just buys something, right? Um, the caliber is different. I have uh, one of our coaching clients. He gets all his leads from podcasts. He has, does no other advertising source. And he said that that he, the reason why is he shut off everything else. Cause it's like someone who's, who has an iPhone and they listen to podcasts during the day is like a higher level person, right? Like people don't have any money, aren't listening to podcasts. Typically, usually they're, you know, watching cartoons and eating cereal or whatever. Right. But like the higher person, the person who's like your dream client is. And so for him, that's like podcast is where his dream clients come from. For me, it's the same kind of thing. Like someone who actually sits down and reads this entire book, it's a different level person. And so it's attracted different types. It's attracted people into our business that that can afford more to invest in our coaching programs. Um, people who um, are more likely to to fulfill on like using click funnels, right? It's it's just brought a higher quality, uh, higher ca caliber customer into our world. I think that's the the biggest thing. And so, I mean, books are, if you think about it, books are scarce. Like I got this entire wall is wrapped in books. Like I'm obsessed with books, but not many people nowadays are, right? Like I walk in my friends' houses and they have TVs that are bigger than my bookshelves. And I, at my house, I've got little tiny TVs. I'm like, you guys, the TVs are huge. Like anyway, and I think that people who, who read are just, it's a different caliber and, and uh, I think a better person. And that's the kind of customers I want in my world, people that are readers. So that's great. Now, final, final parting tip for people thinking about writing and, and publishing their first book. Um, don't wait 10 years like I did because <laughs> it, it would have been good. Um, that's part of, I think, I think a bigger part is just, um, is really looking at it from, from an overall strategy point because the book in and of itself is probably not gonna make you any kind of money. But if you think through it ahead of time, like we did, like I, I spent a lot of time thinking like, how is this, what's the process? Like where are we can take somebody through and, and, uh, and using the book as a tool just to provide an, an insane amount of value. So that way that people will naturally want to send up. Like, don't write a book that's going to be a crappy book. Some people write just books that are dumb. Like, write a good book so that when someone reads it, you don't want to read a book like, oh, that wasn't that good. Because then, then it ruins all the purposes you have in writing a book, right? You want to read a book and be like, wow, that was really, really good. Because as soon as they do that, then they, like, they want, like, what's the next thing I have? Like, where, where can I go from that? Like, you know, that way when you do a webinar two weeks later, like, man, I want to be on this webinar because, like, that book was amazing, you know? And then they want to get the coaching. They, people will naturally want to ascend if you blow their minds. And so use it as a tool to do that. Use it as, um, uh, as, a, as a tool to really give people an amazing experience. And if you do that, then everything else will, will work. Like, people will naturally want to give you more money and, and get closer to whatever you, you have to offer because they had such a good experience initially with the book. Got it. That's great, man. Well, Russell, thanks so much. This has been awesome. I know I've learned a lot. Hopefully people watching uh, have as well. Um, before we kick off, where can people go to find out more about you or the book or ClickFunnels, wh wherever you want to send them? Yeah. Um, if you go to uh, .com, secrets.com, so spell out D-O-T-C-O-M, secrets.com, there will be a link to the book funnel. There will be a link, I'm sure, to ClickFunnels, I hope. Pretty sure. Anyway, mo most of my stuff will, will, will uh, spread off from there or just go to ClickFunnels.com to check that out. Um, but yeah, that's probably the easiest way. Awesome. Russell, thanks, man. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate it.